This week, you're no better off in Delaware than you are in Miami. It's hot as balls everywhere. Of course, down here, 92 degrees is just a typical Saturday, and I'm out on the trails soaking it all in, or soaking my shirt in sweat. So how do you ride in the heat? What can you do to make it more tolerable and safe? Well, it's no secret that a major component to riding in the heat is proper hydration. As one of my roadie friends says, if you start your ride thirsty, you're already done. Hydration should start long before your ride, even the night before if possible. Eating right or not too much is probably a good idea as well. While you don't want to starve yourself, you're probably better off with a banana than let's say carnitas tacos. So you're well hydrated and laying off the heavy food. You'll still need to stay hydrated on your ride. Your options are a water bottle or a hydration pack. Which do you choose? Water bottles are perhaps the simplest solution, and they keep your body free of obstructions so you can feel the breeze. Although we've all lost a water bottle on a hard landing, a good bottle and cage combination can be pretty secure. For XC riders and most trail riders is a great solution. For many of us though, water bottles leave a lot to be desired. First of all, they're limited in terms of volume. Even a large bottle doesn't quite cut it for a longer ride not in the south. Also, many mountain bikes can't even accept a bottle cage. Not only that, but some people just don't like having stuff mounted to their bike if they can help it, myself included. So many riders opt for the hydration pack. You can get the comically small one that barely fits a car key, or the huge one that fits every bike tool you own plus two gallons of water. All of them hold more water than a bottle and deliver it in the most convenient way possible. Having instant access to water without fumbling with a bottle is pretty nice. What's better, hydration packs are extremely secure, with one or two cross straps to keep things in place. There's no way a hydration pack is going to fall off of you. All these benefits come at one huge cost though. Hydration packs block the air that would otherwise be cooling you off. I should know since I'm usually riding with this beast, which has all of my camera gear in it. One little trick I use is freezing the entire pack the night before. By the time you get to the trails, enough of it should have melted to get you started. Instead of making you sweat, it feels cool on your back. On a hot day, you'll have a steady supply of melt water to drink. There's nothing like ice cold water when it's hot as balls out. Whether you're using a bottle or a pack, you have the option of mixing other stuff in with your water, like Gatorade for instance. While sugar and electrolytes probably can benefit you when you're going hard, they too are a matter of personal preference. The most important thing is that you start off the day hydrated and continue to hydrate during your ride. If you're getting dizzy and can't seem to quench your thirst, it's time to stop or start heading back. Now that we've covered hydration, we should also talk about what you're wearing. I find that the single most important item to consider is your helmet. The top of your head is a huge radiator of heat so a helmet with good ventilation can give you enormous gains. Cross-country helmets seem to do the job best, but a well-designed enduro helmet can be pretty good too. I probably chose the worst color for riding in the sun, but overall I can't complain. If you wear a full face helmet, then I sure hope you're in British Columbia and using a lift instead of pedaling. For a long hot day riding single track, it might be a little much. Finally, clothing. While my cotton t-shirt and shorts are my YouTube uniform, I concede that jerseys are a better choice for heat dissipation. Racing jerseys will usually have a zipper in the front, which you can let down for additional ventilation. The material the jerseys are made of is particularly effective at allowing your sweat to evaporate, which makes for a cooler and more comfortable ride. So we've established that proper hydration along with some finer points can help you weather a heat wave, but there are other things you can do to make the most of a super hot day. During the summer, I ride Virginia Key Park almost exclusively. One, because it's right on the water and always has a breeze, and two, because you don't need to ride the whole park in one shot. All of the sections are tight switchbacks that give you the option of looping back to the trailhead instead of continuing on. I'll usually ride for a maximum of 30 minutes before I go back to the trailhead for a drink and a breather. For this reason, you may want to consider riding smaller parks when it's excessively hot. Those long day trips might be better suited to a cooler day. What do you guys do to stay cool? I know some of you are in Arizona where it's like a thousand degrees today. How do you brave the heat? 
let us know in the comments. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.